Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Mayur. Let's just wait for another two minutes for people to join in, and then we could actually start. So, whoever wants to communicate can use the chat and uh, put across their questions or maybe whatever they want to say. Okay. Let's just wait for another one minute, and then we can start. Okay, I think uh, it's a good time to start now. So, uh, good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, I am Mayur Sachdeva. Uh, let me give you a brief about uh, who I am. So, uh, currently, I work as a university growth consultant at Law Seco. And uh, prior to this, I have spent a decade in the legal publication industry working as a proprietor to Rajasthan Laws, which is uh, Rajasthan's oldest uh, law publishing company established back in the year 1958. And since then, I had been publishing books, even authoring them. And uh, that's about it, like a brief idea as to what. So we had been publishing uh, various uh, text-related books, various uh, civil and criminal law-related books. We also have books on banking laws and uh, environmental laws and all those things. Okay. And, uh, okay, so let me just clarify what this webinar is all about. So this webinar is definitely not about how you can go about writing a book. Maybe we could cover that someday on uh, another webinar. But this webinar is about you have already written something and uh, you don't know how to get it published. Let's say, for an example, there must be people who have written around 10, 20 25 articles and uh, they want to compile it into one uh, good book and then you go ahead and publishing it. So uh, in order to start with this, uh, the first and foremost for which I would be requiring all your participation would be the question, what are the different types of legal publications? Like for example, uh, let's say Bear Act is one kind of publication uh, legal publication. So uh, I want uh, everyone to participate and tell me what are the different kinds of publication as per you. Can we have that on chat? Yes, publications of law journals. Law journal is one sort of uh, legal publication, correct Namit? Can I come up with more answers? Okay, if uh, you guys are not aware about different kind of uh, legal publication and uh, you want me to answer this question right away, then uh, probably I could be the one. Case analysis uh, is not a legal publication. Publication on the legal blog, yes. Publication of the research paper, yes. Okay, uh, let me tell you what are the different kinds of publications, legal publications. So uh, the major uh, first one which I said uh, was uh, the Bayer Acts. Then uh, there are law books as to, uh, let's say, uh, autobiographies of the legal uh, illuminaries. Then there are, uh, let's say, reference books. Uh, and then there are commentaries. Then there are short commentaries. Uh, then there are uh, digests. Then there are researches. And all those things are there. Okay, so basically, uh, let me just clarify it for you that uh, what is the basic difference between all of these and legal journals yes i forgot to mention that so legal journals are basically uh, reporters uh, like a all india reporter or a scc or there are uh, many uh, local journals also delivering on the state subject matters okay so those are the legal journals and then there are uh, legal commentaries Yes, correct. It's called biographies. But there are people who have written their autobiographies also. So uh, that's why I said uh, use the term autobiographies also. But you are correct. It can be called biography also. Okay. So then there are uh, legal commentaries. So uh, what is basically a commentary? A commentary is a book where you start with, uh, let's say, uh, for example, Article 14. You want to uh, write you are writing a commentary and then article 14 is one part of it. So article 14, you go ahead with why article 14 came into picture. 
what was the reason behind getting article 14 into the constitution and then you go ahead by telling how it has come to uh, the day today uh, as to what uh, was the need of the hour, what all amendments were covered and then you go about telling how and uh, what shape is it going to take in the future like a zest of it okay that's how you prepare a commentary and a commentary book will hold a uh, commentary on all the sections or all the articles if we talk about constitution then all the articles of the constitution uh, covered under one roof will be a commentary with a brief description about detailed description not a brief description detailed description about what all uh, how it came into existence and what is the current state and how is it going ahead okay and then there are short commentaries let's for example for short commentaries let's say uh, law of estoppel so uh, somebody writing an exclusive part on the law of estoppel would be a short commentary right and all these short commentaries could again be compiled into a commentary what are reference books so reference books are generally uh, digests of the cases like a place from where you could draw a reference to reach a point to reach a different point okay and digests and reference books uh, the major difference is in the digest you only have a case law digest but whereas in the reference books you also have uh, amendments and all those things covered that's how you prepare a uh, legal reference and uh, there are other kinds of barracks is all uh, i i believe everyone would be knowing what a barrack is okay so these are the various kinds of uh, legal publications uh, that are there again uh, okay moving ahead uh, are we all clear with the diff uh, different types of uh, legal publications you could simply say yes or no in the chat box if any more clarity is required on any kind of legal publication you could also mention that great so everyone uh, it seems is clear with the different type of legal publications okay uh, so now uh, let's suppose you have already had a publication you are writing let's say a short commentary so what should be the correct strategy uh, to go about choosing the correct publisher for your book let's assume that uh, this is the first time you have ever written a book and you want to get it published so there are two options basically of publishing a book one uh, is you go by self publishing a book and uh, the second option is uh, you go through a traditional book publisher like me uh, uh, who is a local publisher indian publisher or an international publisher too so what should be the correct strategy and how you could actually analyze and decide which publisher to approach for for your book so uh, uh, let's start with self publishing so self publishing there is no problem to self publishing as such but then the only thing that matters the most or where the most difference lies is that you have to market your book you have to create your own distribution channel as to how you could actually because uh, nobody writes a book just to read themselves uh, people want lot more readers uh, like many readers to read their books and then appreciate it probably so uh, a traditional publisher would always have a distribution channel in place will always have a, uh, a let's say an audience <laughs> okay that's a little personal and uh, in about the international publishers i can actually i will uh, i mean later i will discuss as to what can be a strategy to approach a international publisher to okay uh, so currently i was talking about uh, the traditional publishers so you a traditional publisher or international publisher will always have a audience which is like loyal to them brand loyal and uh, they probably have a distribution channel in place you don't have to market the book you don't have to get them to every book stall and th all these things could be taken care by a publisher okay and if you self publish then all these things are lacking and you probably have to make a difficult way through to even fight with these traditional publishers and then make yourself a self publisher okay going ahead uh, publishing getting your book published with a getting your book published uh, through a let's say uh, a traditional publisher so what happens is traditional publishers are always looking for manuscripts okay 
and uh, they are actually how do i put it i don't know they are they're actually looking for people to write books for them the only problem or the only matter for of risk for them like is uh, the marketing of the book as to uh, will people like it will people not like it because you are the first this is the first time you are ever writing a book okay and the publisher might not might not know the like uh, i mean the law himself or might not just read through the whole thing he might just have a team of editors to do it for himself okay and uh, again uh, the uh, advantages part of publishing a book with the publisher is that he has a team in place where uh, the team comprises of uh, let's say the proofreaders so proofreading is a very important part of publishing any book because you there are so many mistakes that just skips your eye and uh, if that gets published then there are uh, possible i mean possible dislikes from the people that you could get and uh, okay, uh, so coming back to the point uh, there is a team of proofreaders and i when uh, i mean i when when i publish a book uh, i make sure okay i can take questions at a later stage let me just first talk it out and introduce to everyone like uh, what all this is about okay so uh, coming back to the point there's a team of proof reading and proof reading is the most important part i mean nobody wants their book to be with grammatical errors or typographical errors and all those things so generally what happens is like while i was publishing a book i used to make three readings of the book one reading to be made by a proof reader then once the proof reader has done his job then we want the author to read it again so that no part of the book is missing and then once the second reading that is after uh, once the second reading by an author is complete then we again make it go through uh, like we get it typed okay page made and then we get it again proofread through a proofreader so that still the whatever errors might be there just could be cleared off okay so all these things happen as a proof, uh, as a part of the proofreading team then there is a page making and designing team okay so you cannot simply book a, put a word document across and print it and give it to people right you need to have a proper page design has a proper uh, formatting there are publishers like me who used to have specific font criteria for their books used to follow that very particular font uh, for all their books okay and all those things and then we have page designers and page makers they are typists all these form a part of uh, the uh, i mean let's say the page making and designing team then once this is done then you have a printing uh, thing going on so some publishers have their own offset printing machines while the others uh, might not have and they get, might get it uh, outsourced so there's a printing department altogether different then there is a binding unit with a publishing with a publishing company where the book once it is printed uh, is again uh, bound and then the distribution channel comes into the place okay all these things might uh, be lacking if you are self publishing it okay so the next point uh, uh, i mean uh, the next point would be uh, publishing it through an international uh, publisher so international publishers are publishing books with a renowned authors right and reputed authors who have had like experience of 25 years 30 years down the line and these international publishers generally have like a, a relationship of let's say a decade or old relationship or something so uh, the simple strategy of going about uh, getting your book published uh, from a international publisher is as simple as you start by contributing a chapter why do i say that the reason behind the same is because if you go and tell them that i am doing it for the first time and i want to, uh, you to publish it then probably it will be like why should i do it i have a international reputation to look to why should i publish an amateur pub, uh, author's book so all these things all these things matter a lot okay to an international publisher okay so international publishers uh, once let's say uh, you go to lexis nexis and you tell them that mulla cpc this particular chapter i think is missing from your book or uh, this is not uh, the way it should be and you explain him that value that you could actually add so you could actually start by contributing a chapter towards that book okay 
and uh, that could be in simple arrangement where you ask the publisher that you publish this chapter if you find it correct then you publish this chapter and give the credits on my name just for this chapter so this is how you make a debut okay and then you keep uh, doing those things with the international publisher to build a trust or a relationship that you are going through a, going to do a good job for him okay price uh, is hardly a matter in case of the international publishers but yes price might be an issue if we talk about traditional publishers so generally what i used to pay out uh, to my authors even young or uh, first timers or even let's say the old ones so that ranges from 100 rupees a page that includes one word uh, one page of a word document that i would be paying out 100 rupees for that page or up to 150 rupees a page that was that is something which i used to pay to my authors okay and uh, uh, the third and the most important part uh, of this uh, webinar is what are the different kinds of career options that you could actually make in the legal publication industry so for this uh, i have like uh, you can be an author you can be a sub editor you can be an editor to a journal you could contribute in many ways but then uh, the most uh, common question that i used to get was that how do we go about like making money out of our publication okay so uh, the career okay the career part always involves the money part right people don't want to do it without a monetary value attached so how could you go about like how could you actually figure out a strategy where you could actually go about and doing uh, making money at the same time you become a sub editor or editor to a journal or an author for a book so how do you go about doing it it is as simple as that so uh, okay for this i have a question with, for everyone like uh, how many of you are aware about uh, what an head note is are people aware about what a head note uh, in a legal journal means like what is in head note you could actually use chat and tell me like if uh, like if you are aware about what a head note is if you are not aware about what head note is so i could actually go on and explain what a head note looks like so pushkal says it's a summary it's right in a way okay but not uh, very correct i would say kartavya says uh, i don't know okay so i will explain what a head note is so uh, all these note inserted on a head definitely not keshav okay so uh, i'll tell you uh, what a head note is so basically absolutely correct shubham kumar that's very correct so uh, what uh, a head note is basically it's the black bold letters or the catchy uh, catchy notes that are inserted above every case law in a legal journal so you might have come across air and scc with those black bold catchy letters written above the judgment which gives you a brief about what actually the judgment is talking about right those are head notes and uh, these head notes form a very important part of a legal journal why do they uh, why i mean why do they uh, become a important part is for a simple reason that uh, people generally read those head notes and then decide whether they want to read the full judgment or they don't want to read a judgment because making the research part easy for everyone these head notes are used okay so uh, once you go about reading those head notes you could actually decide whether the judgment you are reading is talking on the same point or is it not talking on the same point which you are looking for for your research okay so these head notes uh, i mean a local uh, publisher uh, of a law journal uh, with the state uh, i mean circulation some or uh, or maybe a national circulation of the journal they would be paying out a minimum amount of 100 rupees for those head notes so you could actually go ahead and uh, approach some local uh, journals or local publishers of journals and tell them that we know that you are paying out 100 rupees a head note to everyone writing a judgment uh, writing a head note for you i could actually do that in the beginning for free 
let's say uh, start with uh, uh, i can do it for a month for free or let's say two months for free and i am actually going to save you that cost and i'm actually going to give you a, deliver better results than what your authors are doing it for you okay so that way you start building a relationship so one month down the line or let's say two months down the line once the publisher is convinced enough that one he is saving money that he is paying out to uh, the different uh, authors two that the quality of work that is getting out of you is actually better than the quality of work that he is getting out of those people so what he would actually do is give you a job of writing those head notes constantly and then probably you could start with uh, writing it for let's say 50 rupees yes definitely you could do this as a law student also there is no harm in doing it i mean you don't require any particular expertise or anything it's just a practice that you could it's just a skill that you need to develop uh, going ahead like if you are actually interested in that job and once you start giving those head notes to him you could while two months down the line you could actually ask for 50 rupees a head note which is again a 50% of what he is actually paying out to people and that way you start getting or building a relationship with the publisher and then once you are actually writing those head notes it is much easier for you to write your research papers or even get your books published through those local publishers or traditional publishers that is the strategy you could actually make use of to make a career in the legal publication industry because a lot of lot of people do recognize what a head note looks like but they don't know how to actually build a career around those so we have had like a team of uh, 30 odd people writing head notes for me uh, some of them are even interns doing that job for us but then interns sometimes they just uh, i mean shift from the goal and then they have some of the other problems so that we that why you, that's why we used to have interns and then there are uh, things like having a local i mean a grip over the local language if you have that extra advantage with you that you could actually deliver head notes in let's say english as well as in hindi then probably you are irreplaceable for a legal publisher because most of the authors have command in only one language and uh, let's say you approach a bangalore based publisher and you actually tell him that i am going to give you head notes both in english and uh, as well as in uh, kannada so the, uh, don't you think that publisher would be actually in a better position to publish his books because everyone is looking to reach more reach out more and more people and what is the, i mean this is a common general problem that people don't realize that all these things uh, the local language has a, altogether more reach than what english has so this forms a very unique value add for you to go ahead right and uh, this this is the kind of career that actually you can build over time uh, while being a law student as well as uh, by being an advocate who's getting uh, some of the time and is actually interested in going about uh, learning the new this thing uh i don't think so this service will be provided to newspaper you can actually go and write uh, articles for the newspaper but that depends totally on uh, whether they'll be publishing it or not but uh, if you go and talk to a law book publisher or a uh, person who is actually publishing a journal uh, he would be more interested uh, in getting you on board rather than a newspaper or something newspaper generally have like a political agenda and people to please with and uh, they want uh, more of the business side of it rather than the uh, application part of it so i would not say that the newspaper and media houses are a good option rather you should approach a publisher law book publisher who's been publishing uh, law books so uh, so there are different kinds of law journals that you could actually go out and look for uh, one are the journals like air and scc uh, those are a little difficult to crack with because they have strict criteria and they don't entertain a lot of new people they might just entertain you for uh, different reasons but then uh, generally it doesn't happen but there are other publishers Uh, like uh, to name a few would be um, let's say crimes is a journal uh, published from delhi uh, and uh, by vinod publications private limited 
and uh, that is one journal then uh, okay i we also publish one journal which is named as gujarat current decisions and is a fortnightly journal definitely not uh, definitely it is not a disadvantage to publish your first with uh, first book with a law book public a local publisher why uh, do i say that is for a simple reason that a local publisher also has some sort of distribution channel which in your case would be lacking like i'm assuming that it will be lacking and most of the cases it do lack right the, there's no distribution channel and nobody wants to publish a book and just to keep it uh, to themselves rather everyone is interested that their books get published and then it gets distributed to let's say all of the uh, bookstores or the book stalls around right so uh, it's not a disadvantage at all to begin with it's the best thing that you approach a local publisher publish like 5 10 books with him and then actually go ahead and do uh, it with the like give that uh, proposal to an international publisher and tell them like i have already published uh, these many books with a local publisher and now i am looking to forward to publish my book with you and uh, again uh, like discussing more on this point you should actually once you approach a international publisher you should actually need to tell them what is the value add that you are giving them because they already have so many uh, decade or relationships with the authors in place that they don't uh, they are don't intend to start with new people altogether right so if you are able to tell them that value add that you have already read 10 types of books and then you are actually able to make out what is the value add that you are giving and that nobody else is able to give right then the international publisher is also all the more more convinced to publish your book and uh, that's how you could actually go about doing it right okay uh, usual profit sharing ratio so uh, if you publish a book there are uh, i mean uh, i can't count them right now but i can uh, tell you how all things like you can make money so uh, the first thing is the royalty okay generally the royalty part uh, depends upon the amount of the books copies that are being published okay that's uh, print run is the word for it right so let's say uh, if the publisher is publishing 1000 copies of your book then the royalty would be based out of those 1000 uh, copies only and that to on the uh, cost price of the book okay so let's say the cost price of the book is 50 rupees and then the publisher would be paying out uh, for those 1000 copies he'll be paying out you 20% of the royalty in usual cases okay the other and the most um, followed pattern in the publication industry is that uh, one shot payment right so let's suppose you uh okay i will just uh, answer that question in a while let me just finish the point i'm talking about okay so uh as a uh, i mean okay so profit sharing ratio was the thing we were talking about so as a uh, i mean after the royalty part one shot payment is the thing so let's say you submit to a publisher a manuscript of let's say 1000 pages or, or uh, yes 1000 pages so he would actually pay you uh, per page wise okay and uh, per page wise i mean uh, 4000 pages he would be giving you uh, 100 into 1000 that's like 1 lakh uh, rupees for your book and that's a one time payment then he can make actually n number of reprints to it then there are things as to uh, you publish a book on edition basis all these things form a part of the copyright arrangement agreement that a publisher and author uh, goes with like okay so all these arrangement agreements generally speak about all these terms and all these uh, payment rights and all those things and or what are the copyright and who who it will lie with all these things are covered in the part of the copyright arrangement agreement so these are generally the two practices which a lot of publishers follow for publishing books okay so now taking to the question as a student we start intern on those publication help in upcoming books uh yes you could 
but uh, you need to give them a better thing as to uh, you write and then give it to them so the chief editor of a journal or let's say a publication house would actually guide you as to a way where you are lacking they might not do it uh, all the time but then a few times here and there because you are doing it for free as an intern they might just tell you that these things need to be improved so that their work also gets easier right so as an intern on those publication helping on kimming books yes you could how to go about selection of the topic to write which is likely to get published okay so this is uh, shivangi this question uh, i mean starting of the webinar only i told you that this webinar is definitely not about how can, how can you go about writing a book and uh, we could actually do that on some other day in some other webinar uh, talking about how you can actually go about writing a book and uh, again i could uh, take a session on that because i have already Uh, authored and edited like uh, more than hundred plus books, and I have copyrights to my name for those books. Okay, so can we have more questions from everyone? What is the way to approach a publisher? Okay, uh, so I already uh, covered this part where I uh, told everyone that you the best possible way to approach a publisher is to decide on what topic. Let's say you. are writing a book on uh, tax law gst okay so you uh, always have this in mind that i would go to taxman and tell them that please publish my book but taxman already has so many authors like uh, girish ahuja and all who are actually writing it for them since a very uh, since decades right so you could actually search for local publishers who actually have uh, like printing books like uh, there's this one national uh, publisher called uh, ctj publications and uh, they only publish books on uh, uh, tax so you could actually tell them that this is something new this is about the practical approach of things or this is something which i have written is missing in a lot of books and then those publishers would be in a better position to publish your book and they also have like a national distribution channel okay and uh, next is amish with the sole focus on getting more clients what about self publishing ebooks like on amazon okay so uh, this is a very good way of self publishing your books uh, like if you publish your books on amazon kindle but then yes a lot of uh, people let's say uh, reading those books are actually uh, not reading it on kindle it has still not come up like the way the traditional books are being read i mean you getting it published through a local publisher would make more sense than you publishing it on amazon kindle as of now but going ahead with the time definitely yes there'll be a lot more uh, opportunities for you to self publish your book on amazon kindle uh then there is prasanna's question what kind of contractual and negotiation problems do you face as a publisher dealing with the first time authors so uh okay aspiration i would say so a first time author is very i mean uh, inspired that he has done something extraordinary and uh, it should get published right away all of us believe that way right so as a, a publisher you have to tell them that see you writing a book is one part of it but then me distributing it marketing it and what if people are not ready to buy your books so all that point of the risk that you publishing of with a first time author lies on a publisher right so you actually might make a lot of losses uh, like for example uh, i i will give you a one uh, real life example that i faced uh, there was this nlu uh, author i mean there was this nlu professor who came up to me and told me that uh, i want to uh, get my book published and uh, the book was about clat okay and the uh, legal reasoning in the clat so he had actually written a very nice book around that area but it was only 175 pages ka book that we could actually figure out and i had to pay a lot of money to that so that book got prepared i paid the pub, uh, i paid the author the amount but i could actually not publish it why 
for a sole reason that i did not had circulation to those book stores where the students books are sold okay so that's how even though i paid him the money i gave him whatever is required what was required for him but i couldn't actually publish it so all these things tend to happen like on a regular basis let me have some more questions uh what place legal article should be published uh the best place uh, i mean legal article the best place to publish is a law journal and uh, there are several journals publishing your articles you just need to have a right approach and you just need to tell them or uh, figure them out and then actually approach them with your articles and they'll make sure that they publish it but uh, from an academic point of view if we talk about publications there as a assistant professor or somebody who is doing phd or something then you should look for journals with an issn number okay to publish your articles that will be more effective for you please name the authors who you think will publish our books okay i am just uh, mm, mm, i am one of those people who are actually looking for uh, new authors and uh, because i uh, believe myself that uh, a lot of people don't have that opportunity to actually get the uh, books published so i do invest a lot in uh, publishing book uh, for uh, young ones then uh, kamal publishers delhi lawmen is one such good example who publishes for new authors and uh, like there are local publishers if you uh, local by local publishers i mean state wise publication people making a lot of state publications would actually be interested uh, in trying out uh, young and new authors how to get articles published so uh, you could uh, with your article you send them uh, your article in pdf format and give them for in uh, uh, give them like ask them for their reviews on your article and then tell them to publish it if they find value in it if they find that the subject matter of your article deals with the same subject matter the journal is on they will definitely publish it on an average how long the whole review and editing cycle takes once author has submitted the manuscript this is a very good question namit so uh, generally it depends on the size of book right uh, let's say if it's a 100 page book it might actually take uh, a month time to actually review and then edit and uh, then actually get it to the printing uh, machine okay is in case any contempt of court or defamation in the book's content then who is liable uh, that uh, forms the part of the copyright arrangement agreement case uh, as to i mean there would be specific clauses in the agreement which states like uh, for example ha which will state about all these liabilities to be covered and who indemnifies the losses so all these form a part of the copyright arrangement agreement that you have with your publisher what uh, publishing agreement include so it includes like this uh, indemnity clauses and uh, like the term of the publication let's say is it for one edition of the book or it is it like number of multiple number of uh, reprints that you could make out of a book or is it about uh, let's say only up to certain number of copies that you could actually publish uh, 2000 copies of this book and then if you publish more than 2000 copies you have to get it uh, reviewed again then there are specific clauses as to if the new edition of the book has to come out then you are the only author that uh, would be doing it and he cannot get involved the publisher cannot get involved with another author so all these things form a part of the uh, arrangement agreement can we write for law school and college yes definitely why not we can obviously write for law schools and colleges as to uh, what uh, the practical things are there because uh, i'll tell you how you could actually uh, that's a good question because what happens most of the time law schools uh, generally have this big gap as to the theoretical part of the things uh, rather than the uh, let's say the practical approach of the things 
and that's what again we do at Law Seco. We give you that practical training and all those things as a part of our course curriculums. So you could actually write books where you could actually make people uh, do drafting exercises. Maybe give them an exercise or something, or, and they actually practice it themselves and then get it edited by you. That's how you can actually build a relationship with them and. Uh, you could actually talk about those questions which are not generally covered, like, right, uh, like, mm, I don't see any book uh, being published on the student politics at law colleges, right? And all those things actually could also form a very important part. Okay. Uh, the next question is by Ankit. What is the usual income sharing percentage between author and publisher? It depends from publisher to publisher. Uh, like, uh, if you are a first time author, the publisher might not pay you a lot. But uh, if you have been writing for over a decade or something, then probably he would be giving you somewhere around 150 rupees to 200 rupees a page uh, for your publication uh, in one shot. And then royalty could actually go from 20% to 40%. Fez Ayat Ansari, I am an assistant professor, have got a few books in the pipeline for publication. How can I contact you? Uh, you can contact me on uh, phone or uh, my email ID. My email ID is mayur at the rate ipleaders.in. I'll just type it out for you. Uh, that's my email, and, uh, email ID and uh, my personal mobile number. Anyone who wants to call, uh, contact can contact me. Should I copyright my book, book before publishing? Generally, uh, the copyright arrangement agreement that you make with the publisher, uh, there's a clause that uh, before the publication of the book, uh, you the publisher needs to register a copyright. And uh, that is the cost uh, the most of the time the publisher bears. So that's the answer for your question, Keshav. Uh, then Mahesh Dhanavat. Okay, how to write a book on topic inspiring kid to become judge? How to write a book on inspiring? So these are motivational books. You need to, uh, you might just give them case studies where uh, people have started early in their lives and have always uh, dreamt of becoming a judge and they could actually crack. Like uh, one very good example that I came across uh, was the case study of uh, the person who just cracked like at the youngest age, uh, uh, the Rajasthan Judicial Services. It was... Kartavya, next question is from Kartavya. It was my interested topic, sir. I contact after this. Any help, sir? It was my interested topic, sir. I couldn't. Okay, if you want to contact me, yes, you can definitely contact me. I am always open to help everyone across. So that's not a problem. More questions, please. Okay, how to popularize the book as the best selling author? So uh, as a self-publisher, publishing those books, you could actually market them at large. Uh, by marketing, I mean you could actually advertise it online as well as offline. And you could actually make those books reach every bookstore. So once the book is reaching every bookstore, the distribution channel is such. Because what, what happens is like people are not aware about such kind of a book. Until unless you are like a mullah or a Ratan Lal, Dheeraj Lal, or uh, let's, there are so many big, big authors. We, I mean, I can't go ahead and uh, name all of them. But then, yes, uh, you uh, can be, I mean, it, it, it is majorly a part of the distribution uh, technique as a publisher because the publisher having the most uh, like exhaustive distribution channel would be in a better position to market your book. And uh, again, the second question is from Mahesh Tanavat. Uh, can we write on the book from the bestsellers? Yes, there is no uh, this thing. You should not be copying their content. And uh, even if you have to draw references, then a proper acknowledgement should be made to the original author of the book and the publisher. And uh, then you could actually use it for your own self also. In your experience, please tell how you should write your book, like parag paragraph storytelling, chapterizing, and summarizing. So, uh, 
if depends uh, totally ankit uh, on how uh, the book what kind of book are you writing i mean if it's a storytelling book where uh, like a legal novel you are uh, interested in writing then probably uh, you should uh, do the storytelling part and uh, if it's a book for uh, the uh, let's say students then you should actually go ahead and uh, form it as a summarizing thing and uh, if it's a reference book or a, let's say a commentary then they should be chapter wise no then the next question is from prasanna if it is a one time payment for writers in royalty does that mean you will have you will be having the copyright assigned to the publisher post payment uh that can be done i mean a uh, one time payment means that uh, the publisher is allowed to publish n number of reprints of the book that uh, of the manuscript that you have given him right and uh, royalty generally comes on the print run uh, whatever the print run the publisher is having or whatever the new editions that will be coming up in the future that are royalty based okay uh then the next question is from s shrivastava what motivated you to come into this field and how you started okay uh, so uh, the this is a very interesting story i think uh, i should be i should have told this to you everyone before so uh, my father uh, was a law book publisher and uh, uh, keshav i can uh, answer that question later so my father was a law book publisher uh, by the name of rajasthan laws and uh, he had this uh, he habit of having power naps in the afternoon because uh, our office and our house was very nearby so he used to come down uh, to us for a power nap uh, in the afternoon so that time my uh, book uh, used to be like uh, free uh, that 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 time my uh, office used to be free and there was nobody sitting except for the staff so my father actually offered me while i was in my 10th standard he told me to come down to the office and uh, be there for some time so i went went to my office and i saw thousands of big fat books and as a 10th year uh, as, a, as a 10th grade student i did not understand what those books had in them so uh, that uh, i mean ignited a fire into me that uh, i need to actually be someone who is actually able to read those books and uh, that's how i started uh, i mean uh, i started uh, i mean with my career that i'll make a career in law once uh, i made it like uh, once i made to a law college that time i had in mind that uh, now i am able to read those books but uh, then i want to be somebody who could actually write those books and then people should read those books so while i was in my fourth year because of my background my father allowed me to get uh, like some of my um, i mean uh, some of the publications in my name as to he used to give me research based work where i used to research for his barex and put short commentaries under the barex and that's how we actually got marketed uh very well those barracks and uh, that's yeah that's the story i have which inspired me to come to this profession and uh, follow it so uh, keshav uh, next question from you is uh, how do i submit my book ideas to the publisher you uh, can if you have a book uh, manuscript ready with you you could actually send some of the most interesting chapters that you feel are there in your book to the publisher and then they'll be uh, like a sample uh, chapters or something and that could actually give a brief idea about as to what your book is all about and you could actually give them like uh, let's say a page about uh, what you have, what all points you have covered in the book and what makes it a really different one that's how you should submit your book ideas to the publisher which subjects we write in law books it could be anything i mean uh, law is all around i mean law is above all and uh, there are so many topics to choose from you could write on medical negligence you could write on dishonor of checks you could write on uh, civil petitions you could write on pils you could write on slps you could write on anything like it depends totally on you and your uh, like uh, your keen interest as to what area 
you want to cover and then you could actually go about doing it what kind of books do you take on non exclusive license as a publisher i uh, didn't get your question correctly can you uh, be more uh, clear about the question prasanna what are the necessary requirements of getting book published uh, keshav you uh, I, this question is from uh, getting a book uh, self published or uh, from a publisher keshav if you can tell me uh, whether this question is regarding self publishing or publishing through a publisher from publisher so uh, if you want uh, the necessary requirements one the manuscript of the book should be ready then the topic should be something which uh, he is actually uh, i mean um, i mean the topic should be a value add for the publisher and uh, a text publisher would be publishing generally textbooks and not uh, the civil or criminal side of it so uh it should actually be uh, their their area of expertise as to uh, the kind of books they are publishing and other than that i don't think uh, there are much requirements as to uh, getting a book published from a publisher are legal articles paid uh madhusudan uh, they might be they might not be i mean uh, it's just uh, the publisher is already incurring a cost on getting your thing published uh, i am not talking about the online publishers where they don't have to do much uh, like just have to make the formatting and pelgrism check and all those things whereas if it is getting published in a book which is hard copy print then uh, definitely i don't think a lot of people would be paying you for those articles are there any more questions or uh, what's your advice for the to the beginners so uh, my advice would be that you start writing uh, the head notes for law journals i mean uh, that those black catchy words because uh, that is the easiest way to get into a practice of writing something okay those uh, catchy words or this those black board letters are generally uh, not in sentence form right but once they are there and uh, those make a sense to form a sentence it is actually very easy to form a sentence out of them right and if you go about uh, doing that for a regular period of time when you actually develop that skill of writing those head notes then you could actually form sentences and form that part of a book so that's how a beginner could actually begin with uh, writing their books mm, pulkit which are good source for legal research online and offline so legal research online i would say there are a lot of databases that have come up uh, for example scc web is one such database law finder is one such database law suit is just one such database then there is air web one such database for legal research online uh, because uh, they have uh, search engines uh, like they have uh, search optimized as per uh, you could actually search from a catch phrase you could actually do a boolean search in some cases you could actually search a word out and all those things are good ideas to do your legal research online and offline i would say there are softwares uh, that are there but uh, let's not get into uh, the software part and let's just uh, stick to the book part so the best way uh, i used to research personally as for me uh, i used to research through digests or reference books because from there you could actually draw a ref uh, reference because all those books have those head notes in them where i could actually make out whether a case law is uh something which i need or is it not uh, about something which i'm looking for so for me digest uh, would uh, digest or reference books would be something which i would look up to for uh, my research offline and uh, 
uh, come in then uh, once i'm there in the, the uh, research part then probably i'll at uh, take uh, advice from a legal commentary also so prasanna's question is uh, most of the publisher ask for exclusive license while publishing it one author one topic one publisher example did basu is published only by lexis nexis like what kind of books contain do you take non exclusive license example abc publisher can publish my book and also xyz publisher can publish the same book this is not happening nobody would actually want uh, uh, i mean no two publishers would actually want that the same book is published by both of them i mean uh, why is it so because everyone has a reputation at stake and uh, if the same book is again being published so it's a non exclusive thing and uh, people generally publishers don't pub, uh, prefer non exclusive things is criminal cases reports a publication of long standing uh, yes definitely it is it is uh, uh publication of long standing madhusudan pulkit i have also heard of ai in legal research can you tell me something more about it yes uh, ai has come to legal research now and uh, there are uh, assistants where you could actually do a voice search uh, for your case laws and this is just one some uh, small example of it there are us based companies uh, planning to come to india for, with the ai technologies and all so in the future yes maybe we'll have lot more ai coming to the legal research part uh next question is from s shrivasta uh, shrivastava to publish small article in local newspaper which person or department should be contacted of newspaper and whose property it becomes like uh, can you republish the article in another newspaper later generally people are not uh, accepting uh, i mean the publisher of a newspaper or a book they are not accepting uh, the articles which are already published somewhere else and unless it is of uh, very much important or it will give them some extra value to publish that again otherwise people are not interested because uh, most of the times it's a matter of copyright and the copyright arrangement agreement again uh, as i discussed before would have a specific law stating about the same okay any more questions from anyone good question keshav uh how to write a book on unfamiliar topic like space law so uh, i <laughs> okay i will uh, some day take uh, a webinar as to how you could actually write a legal book but uh, today is not the day i could actually answer those questions because uh, we are lacking on time and uh, but just to give you a brief idea you could actually start about thinking what all other space law box, books that are already published and in the market you could actually go about uh, reading 10 books and then realize that uh, what is the point that these 10 books are missing and that could be a very good point to start your book with okay okay uh, so thank you everyone thank you for uh, your time and uh, i really appreciate uh, the participation you guys did and hope to see you guys again <laughs> thank you yeah if there are any more questions somebody can just tell me now or i will end the session now okay so have a good sunday everyone uh, it's a bye from my side see you again bye